Imagine if your M1 Mac Mini had more ports, maybe some SD card readers, and upgradable SSD storage. Uh, this USB-C docking station aims to give you exactly that functionality for just $99. We'd better check it out. This is the Elisif... Elisif... Elisife... I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, it's spelled like this. Um, so I'll go with LSC for this video. It's the A5701 and it's designed to sit underneath your M1 Mac Mini or your 2018 Intel Mac Mini and it matches the look pretty nicely. So you get one USB Type-C port on the front, two USB 3 Type-A ports, a USB 2 port, SD card reader, micro SD card reader and in the bottom there's space for a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. So sounds pretty promising. Uh, now, full disclosure, I was sent this review sample without cost, and I'm not required to return it. But as always, I only accept it on the condition that I retain full editorial control, and I'm free to give you my honest opinion. Uh, so let's start with unboxing and first impressions. Uh, the packaging is really nice quality, and the rendered product shots look really good. As soon as you hold the dock, though, you realise how they're doing this for $99. Uh, the edges of the dock are aluminium and uh, they're a pretty much perfect match for the Mac Mini. Uh, the silver grill though here is plastic and so the dock feels light and a little bit cheap. Uh, of course it's not something that you're likely to tote around with you and you're never going to notice that once it's sat on your desk. The dock connects to the Mac Mini with this short USB Type-C cable which is supplied uh, and it does so via the USB-C port on the rear of the dock. I've seen other versions that look similar to this one that have an additional input on the back for power, but this one doesn't have that. It claims 900 milliamp hours maximum power output to each of those USB 3 and Type-C ports, and 500 milliamp hours for the USB 2 port. That should be plenty for external hard drives and most peripherals, and all the drives that I tested worked fine, but don't expect to be able to fast charge your phone using these ports. Now whilst we're talking about the ports, we need to be clear that this dock is not running at 10 gigabits as you might think it would be based on those Type-C connectors. It's actually limited to 5 gigabits. Now, does that matter? Uh, perhaps not as much on the M1 Mac Mini because most USB external drives won't run any faster than 5 gigabits on the M1. Uh, but if you have an Intel Mini, it ought to factor into your purchasing decision. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of this sort of consumer confusion. USB standards are confusing enough without having devices with Type-C ports running at half speed. Uh, here's how macOS sees the dock in system report. Uh, it does say 3.1 bus, but you can see that individual devices are running at 5 gigabits. We'll do some speed testing in a moment, but first let me show you the party trick for this dock. When you open this compartment, you'll find that there's a SATA port and space for a 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD, uh, so it'd be rude not to try it out. I've purchased this uh, Kioxia 960 gig SATA SSD for the purpose, and if you're wondering, uh, Toshiba renamed their memory division to Kioxia, so this is actually a, a pretty decent drive. Uh, the cheapness of the finish shows itself again as we install the SSD, because it doesn't fit in flush due to these angled plastic standoffs. Uh, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be, but it doesn't feel top quality. Uh, that said, the drive does work fine. And the SD card slots, they work well enough, and they've got a nice latching mechanism for insert and eject. Uh, they apparently support cards up to one terabyte in size, which should be fine for most people. So let's get on to speed testing that internal SATA SSD with Blackmagic Disk speed test. And we're getting 314 megabytes per second on write and 282 on read. And that's some way short of the manufacturer's claim speeds for this drive of 540 and 555 respectively. It's also short of the 5 gigabits per second, which is the maximum USB 3 speed, and the 6 gigabits per second of the SATA interface. Uh, incidentally, if you're not familiar with your bits and bytes, there are 8 bits in a byte, so 5 gigabits is the same as 625 megabytes. Uh, but anyway, these claimed USB speeds are always theoretical maximums. In real life, there is an overhead. But it should still be possible to get close to Kioxia's claimed speeds for that drive. Uh, so let's also try testing one of these Samsung T5 external SSDs. Uh, inside this enclosure is actually a SATA-based SSD, uh, but it can offer up to 500 megabytes per second performance on an Intel Mac or a PC with an appropriate USB port. 
On the M1 Mac, it seems to give away about 25% of its performance, or more sometimes, uh, something Apple still hasn't fixed in the current Mac OS release. But anyway, let's plug the T5 into the back of the Mac Mini first. Uh, and that gives us 312 meg per second on write and 386 on read, uh, which is actually pretty poor compared to Intel Macs, as we'll see in a bit. Uh, but it is consistent with my previous tests on the M1 Mini. If we try the same drive through the dock, we're now getting 280 on write and 294 on read. So we are losing some performance by connecting these devices through the LSE dock. Now, whether that matters to you or not will depend on your workflow and your use case. It doesn't surprise me that we're giving away some performance. After all, we're connecting many ports to a single port on the Mac. So if performance is critical to you, then you'll probably need to go with a more expensive Thunderbolt dock. Now, just out of curiosity, I installed macOS 12 Beta 5 on my Mac Mini, and I reran the tests, mainly to see if Apple had fixed this slow USB issue. And here's what I found. There are marginal performance differences, but I'd say that they're all within a margin of error. So no, Apple still has not fixed the lackluster USB performance in the M1 Max. So are we actually seeing the full potential of this dock? What would it be like with an Intel Mac Mini? Uh, I don't actually have an Intel Mac Mini on hand to test, but I did plug the dock into an Intel iMac and reran those tests. And here you can see the results. And you'll see there's a considerable uplift in performance on Intel. And just for comparison, I've also added the speed of the T5 drive when plugged directly into the iMac. So you can see that you do still lose a fair bit of performance through the dock. Of course, it's not LSE's fault that Apple M1 still isn't working properly with most USB drives. Uh, so I think we should judge the product on its actual capability. Uh, if you're buying this to pair with your M1, then you're going to have to do so knowing that you're losing some of the potential until Apple gets this fixed. Uh, but that's no different to any other USB drive or dock. So conclusions then. Uh, I really like the look of this device, um, but I believe LSE have targeted a price point which just doesn't allow for the most premium build quality. And that won't matter to some. Uh, but I personally would pay more for a higher quality finish. And it's fair to say that I love the concept of a dock with a hard drive connector built in. And I'd really like to see a better made Thunderbolt version. I realize this would probably increase the cost by a, a factor of maybe two or three, but it would be much better suited to a professional workflow. Over Thunderbolt, it would be possible to deliver full 10 gigabit speeds on the USB ports, and would even give scope for NVMe drives instead of SATA or maybe in addition to SATA, and that would be a compelling product. Uh, being able to cheaply expand the storage of your Mac Mini is a pretty killer feature. And even though we're not getting full performance on the M1, the speeds we are seeing are probably plenty enough for most people, to the point where I doubt that you'd notice unless you spend most of your day copying huge files. At $99, I think this is pretty good value for what you get. Uh, and if you wanna pick one up for yourself, there are some links in the descriptions. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. And as always, thank you very much for all of your likes, shares, and subs, and I'll see you next time for some more geekery.